Hello and welcome to Basic Medical Sciences. If this is your first time here, please do subscribe so that you won't miss any of our latest videos. In this video, we are going to talk about the human immunodeficiency virus, right? So this virus belongs to the retroviride family, specifically in the lymphotropic land virus group, right? So the HIV virus contains two copies of positive sense single-stranded RNA genome. It is a reverse transcriptase. So this enzyme called reverse transcriptase is responsible uh, for reversing the process of transcription, thus synthesizing DNA from RNA. All right. This virus uh, in its structure is icosahedral with a conical capsid and it has spiked lipoprotein envelope right so it's an enveloped virus in the previous video i said most of the rna viruses replicate in the cytoplasm of the host cell but there are only two exceptions that's the Orthomix of viruses, right? So orthomix of viruses are the causative agent of influenza, right? So those are influenza virus. And the second group is this retroviride, right? So the HIV virus replicate in the nucleus. All right. So uh, the genome of the HIV virus, uh, it actually has nine genes, encoding for a total of 15 proteins. But of these nine genes, only three are very important. Number one, power gene. Number two, gag gene. And number three, env gene. Right. So uh, the power gene codes for protein, which consists of protease, reverse transcriptase, and integrase. The gag gene codes for a gag protein right so this gag protein consists of matrix protein that's m protein the nucleocapsids and capsid proteins the n gene codes for surface glycoproteins particularly the glycoprotein 41 and glycoprotein 120 that's gp41 and gp120 and now i need you uh to track this glycoprotein 120 because it's very important. Now let's talk about the major antigens of HIV. Envelope antigens, shell antigens, and the core antigen, right? So for envelope antigens, uh, we are mainly talking about the spike antigen, that's the GP120, and I said let's track this one, right? And also, there is a transmembrane pedicle protein, that's the GP41, right? And that is about the envelope antigens. Shell antigens, we have nucleocapsid protein, that's P18. And on core antigens, uh, we have the principal core antigen, that's P24. And this one, you need to track it again, because it's very important. And other core antigens include... Uh, P15 and P55. Polymerase antigens include P31, P51, and P66. But here, uh, remember these two, right? You can forget about the rest, but remember these two, right? The GP120 and the principal core antigen, P24, right? And this one, GP41, you can remember it also because both of these are coded for by the env gene right so these antigens the envelope antigens and the core antigens they they undergo like frequent variation right so uh the hiv actually we have two types we have hiv1 and hiv2 so the most common one is hiv1 right and hiv2 is uh like mainly in west africa okay let's talk about transmission of the HIV. There are three main ways. Uh, sexual, parenteral, and vertical transmission, right? So sexual uh, is responsible for about 80% of infections 
and parental out here we are talking about uh, sharing needles uh, or like those IV drug users right they are at risk of uh, getting HIV through this way and the other way is vertical transmission uh, from the mother to the child during birth for about 5 to 15 percent and through breastfeeding for about 5 to 20 percent right so uh hiv is also regarded as one of the torch infections do you remember them okay here we are number one toxoplasma gondi and others others include treponema pallidum listeria monocytogens varicella zoster parvovirus b19 rubella virus cytomegalovirus and hep simplex virus right so um some texts they include the HIV like in others. Now let's talk about the pathogenesis of the HIV. All right. Firstly, the HIV enters the body. It attaches to the CD4 receptor on target cells uh, using its uh, glycoprotein 120, GP120. So this one is actually uh, for binding. So that's the reason why I was saying we need to track it. And here we can see its function. Right. So the cells uh, that have CD4 receptors include uh, lymphocytes. For example, we have T helper cells. Uh, we have macrophages. We have monocytes, dendritic cells like in the CNS. What will happen then is that the viral envelope fuses with the host cell and the capsid enters the cell. Right. So for this fusion to take place, we need two things, the CD4 receptor and a core receptor, right? So the main core receptor we have are CCR5, particularly in macrophages, and CCR5 or CXCR4 in T cells, right? So individuals who lack this CCR5 are resistant uh, to HIV. And those who have... Uh, a mutation like a homozygous mutation they actually have a, we can say a substantial resistant and those who have heterozygous they have like a slow course slow course of infection okay let's move on the variance rna is then transcribed to dna right so this dna is actually uh, a pro dna we can call it a pro dna and then it is integrated uh, into the host's dna using the enzyme integrase we mentioned it right from there the viral dna is then replicated and the virions are assembled right so uh firstly we can have like a a, a latent period when uh, this uh integrated form of DNA will not cause any infection, right? It will just stay in our DNA, right? But in some cases, the virion can, can repurpose a portion of cell's uh, membrane as its envelope and then leave the host cell, right? So when it leaves cell, it leaves by budding, uh, leading to lysis of the cell, the cell death. All right, uh, now let's talk about uh, the clinical presentation of HIV. So according to the World Health Organization classification, uh, we can classify HIV infection into five groups, right? Number one, primary HIV infection. Number two, clinical stage one. Number three, clinical stage two. Number four, clinical stage three. And number five is clinical stage four. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let's explain what happens uh, during each stage. Primary HIV infection is characterized by fever, fatigue, myalgia, arthralgia, headache, generalized non-tender lymphadenopathy, and oropharyngeal symptoms like sore throat. But, you know, this phase can be asymptomatic like in most cases that's why i highlighted asymptomatic let's move on to clinical stage one this one is characterized by persistent generalized lymphadenopathy or pgl and in some cases it can also be asymptomatic 
Clinical stage 2 is characterized by moderate weight loss of by we can say by less than 10%, all right? And also recurrent fungal, viral or bacterial infections. Clinical stage 3 is characterized by unexplained severe weight loss. So this will be like more than 10% of your weight will be lost, right? And also unexplained chronic diarrhea for more than a month, unexplained persistent fever of uh, more than 36.7 degrees Celsius, uh, and that fever can either be intermittent or consistent, but the key thing is, is it will persist for more than a month, right? It is also characterized by persistent or severe fungal, viral, or bacterial infections. So these are actually opportunistic infections, right? And last but not least, uh, they might be an unexplained anemia, neutropenia, and or chronic thrombocytopenia, right? The fourth stage, uh, the fourth clinical stage, uh, is characterized by AIDS-defining conditions like Kaposi's sarcoma, and pneumocystis pneumonia, right? Uh, and you need to remember that this HIV, it also causes uh, like large B-cell lymphoma, right? Okay, so now let's talk about diagnosis of HIV. Right, uh, we can use uh, like four main ways, antibody detection, nucleic acid detection, antigen detection, or viral isolation but the mostly used method is the antibody detection right so for screening uh, they usually use ELISA this test can give a false negative especially if the infection is like acute for example it's like only a month or two months after infection it can give a false negative so we need to repeat it some uh, some authorities, they say you need to be tested like uh, after three months or until six months, right? right? But if this result is positive, we will do confirmation test, right? It's, or, or a supplementary test. In that way, we use um, Western bloating, right? Then another method uh, is nucleic acid detection. And in this case, we use polymerase chain reaction or PCR, right? So here we'll be detecting uh, the viral RNA. Right. Uh, another method is antigen detection, right? So here you can see this P24. I said we need to track it, right? So this P24 antigen is the earliest virus antigen to appear in blood. It can be detected as it is, and sometimes. Uh, you know, our body is able to make antibodies against this antigen. So we can also detect the antibodies uh, like to this antigen using a LISA test, right? Uh, and another method which is not widely used is uh, viral isolation. And in this case, uh, the patient's lymphocytes are co-cultivated with uninfected human lymphocytes in the presence of interleukin-2. What will happen is that the viral replication can be detected by demonstration of reverse transcriptase activity and presence of uh, viral antigen. All right, to conclude this video, let's talk about uh, treatment of HIV. All right, so uh, here I have a nice table for you, antiviral class and the examples. But what we can do here, I know uh, some drugs, they, the names are too big, but remember the classes, right? Uh, the first class is uh, nucleotide or nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, right? And uh, the second group is non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, Another group is protease inhibitors or PIs, and lastly, um, integrase inhibitors, right? The other class uh, which is not listed here is um, fusion inhibitors, right? Okay, so now let's give the examples on each class, right? 
on nucleotide or nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors we have the following drugs zidovudine lamivudine emtricitabine <laughs> guys sorry for my pronunciation bacavir tenofovir stavudine okay moving on on non nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors uh, here we have two nevirapine and ifavirenz on protease inhibitors, right, we have indinavir, ritonavir, neofinavir, lopinavir, right. Okay. And lastly, on integrase inhibitors, we have rautegravir, dolutegravir, right. So here I highlighted uh, like uh, the, the endings and this is the reason why. Most NRTs, they end with I-N-E, right? And you can see them, like most of them. And most protease inhibitors, they end with NAVIR. And, okay, right? And you can see here, NAVIR, right? And I just highlighted AVIR, but it's NAVIR. And most of integrase inhibitors, they end with GRAVIR, right? And you can see here, GRAVIR. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss any of our latest videos. And give it a thumbs up and tell me what you think in the comment section so that we can improve and make these nice videos for you guys and absolutely for free. Until next time, head bowed.